There's been a massacre in the computational way. I've decided though, that I'm going to get rid of my spare power supply because I've had this power supply running just to provide the 12 volts into my graphics card for the past eight years. Worked beautifully, but it's a bit of a mess. And I got to thinking, the power supply that's here in my Optiplex 7020, it can provide 255 watts. This setup in total only takes 160 watts, maybe 180 or 190. And I think we can do that, especially with underclocking my RTX 2060. So I'm also planning on making this a portable computer with a handle on top and this PCI cord will go through the bottom. And I'll finally, I held out for years, but I'm finally going to cut this computer up. I'm gonna cut a slot for that cable to come out and make a mount for this GPU to go on the side so it can actually stand upright. Now, in order to test this, I need to see, can I get about 12 amps out of this? Rail one of the 12 volts can handle 14 amps and rail two can handle 13 amps. Rail one or rail A is the yellow that goes to the proprietary motherboard connector. Rail B goes to the CPU power. That's the yellow wires here. Now this goes into here and you can see that, okay, the yellows are connected together and the whites are connected together. This is the white. So this is motherboard power. Then this is the um, CPU power right there. And they break out and they go to the same source. So connecting these together will not be an issue for what I want to do. And they have these shunts on them. This is a barely re resistive component, but a very like finite resistive amount. And you see those one of the trays from this one goes over to here. And then the other one joins it up there. And this goes over here and goes into these pins. And those pins go to the voltage regulation board. So whenever there's current drawn across those two shunts, voltage dips a specific amount for every amp pulled. And so that means is that this is going to monitor to make sure that one rail doesn't pull too much. And I want to distribute that current going to my GPU across both rails. So I will be connecting both rails together. I mean, that does happen in the computer technically, but not to as much of a degree. And so what I'm thinking I'm going to be doing is, now that I know this power supply for this Optibuck 7020 can uh, be connected together, I'll put it back together. And outside of the case, I think I'll cut these wires and I'll have extra pieces coming off. I will take some of the ground and I'll unite those with a ground wire and then I'll have some yellow coming off too, connecting to the white. And I'll take both of these power rails and connect them together. Definitely not what it's intended to do, but it can do it. So let's do it. Come on. Got this back together, and now I'm confident that, whoa, start pulling my multimeter. Now I'm confident, not in my abilities to keep my tools safe, but in my abilities to push this a little bit further. I would like to talk in this video, just, I, I want this video just to be about the power supply experiments because Optiplex gaming has become such a popular thing. Now, normally people do Optiplex gaming to save money, However, I actually bought this brand new top of the line and it was like $1,100 back in the day because I didn't want another gaming machine that would have driver issues. I wanted something that was just bog standard and reliable. And I got this with a 4790K, eight gigabytes of RAM. It's actually held up really well. Now, after eight years, I'm finally having a few little issues where some things, mods and such that use 
VR, uh, VR, like VR chat and such, they require too much RAM uh, speed. And so now I might have to actually upgrade this computer at the 10 year mark, but it's lasted me eight years. And I think that whatever the experimentation I've done with my original owner, high end expensive Optiplex, high budget <laughs> Optiplex gaming, can help people that are now getting these for $50 and wanting to push them further. So, you know, initially I had one of those GT740 slim cards that went right here, but the fan was right up against the power supply and I had to remove that plate that we just removed to open it up. And it actually ran for like, for like a year with, like that, just like that. Because otherwise the, the thin graphics card would just uh, have no cooling. I really love this about Optiplexes. Everything pops into place. That tab is depressed when I push it in, it goes up. As with most of this stuff, ever since the 90s, Optiplexes have been so serviceable. Now there are some screws you have to put in the back, but overall, this holds it in place. Now, until now, I've been running this Corsair CX430 power supply that I got for $60 at what, Computer Central or whatever that store was in California still there, I believe. And all it's doing is it's providing the 12 volts to my graphics card. I basically have no worries of power utilization because I have so much power and any worries that someone might have about power supplies running in parallel, it seems like you can do it pretty well. I've been running it for eight years. There will be some issues that you have where maybe the computer won't start up right. Just turn it back off. Make sure you have this on whenever you turn it on. Funnily enough, if you accidentally <laughs> turn this off, thinking you're turning off your speakers, which I just do a lot for some reason, you can turn it off and then like, oh shoot, and turn it back on and your game's still there. The GPU just goes black. Kind of funny. So GPUs actually are very lenient with losing power on this connector. It just goes black. A lot of games now seem to be pretty robust against that. So I think what we're gonna be doing is, I'm going to, before I do this, it'll be a future video, I'm going to see about getting myself a adapter that goes from the 24 pin of the Corsair to this, so that I, so that I can, in case I blow this up, I can run everything off of that power supply because I'm tired of having two power supplies. You know, for a fact, this power supply is probably not efficient at all. And for me, I really like efficiency. I would like to be able to run gaming at like 150 watts of power, maybe less, especially during the summer whenever it starts heating things up. And so whenever I get that in, I will be able to be more confident about risking this power supply. I'll cut the, these wires and have them branch off. And I might even be able to find a similar connector on this same power supply. Cause you know, I just, it's such a mess. I just have all these cables dangling here. So I can probably snip, I've already, I've already gone back to that well a few times. It's like I've snipped a few ends off of this power supply, but it's done me really well. And then we can see about splicing that onto there, or I might just order a, car, a connector for that. We can make a special wire. If we end up having issues, then I'll just have to update my design because I'm fine with having this permanently attached to the side, but I don't know where a power supply would go if I have to have that one permanently connected to it. Oh, come on. I will say it's definitely made it pretty easy to tinker with a computer if it's so easily openable. Also, I'm hoping this can be a, like a part of a bigger modification so I can cut a slot for this because I'm just, I'm committing. It's, it's lasted for eight years. It's just gonna work. So I'm gonna, gonna finally go with it. The 
these are marble tiles I got out of the dumpster at that town cleanup day back in Illinois. Oh, and I finally removed the switch that detects whether or not this is closed because I hadn't really looked into it before. This is an issue with something that just works. Hey, put it back together, just works. Nice. You know, I was kind of worried in this video, would this just all of a sudden decide to have an issue? Because sometimes you put things back together and they don't always work. But this thing's just been working for the longest time. So I haven't actually gone through the effort of upgrading it. And I would like for it to be upright with this on the side with like a nice 3D printed uh, holder. Like, a thing holding it and then having a nice handle on the top if we have to have the atx power supply maybe it can just go up here and it'll just be a taller thing it wouldn't look quite as nice though i want to see if i can use the internal power supply and then later on if i build another computer i might put my gtx 960 in here and then have this go into the other computer which would be my well i'd probably build a computer in 2024 or something like that and i might have to get one that has like much at least much faster ram because vr vr is one of those things that seems a little bit tricky we have normal two-dimensional flat screen gaming pretty much down pat but vr is one of those weird things where you need like high ram and really fast single core cpu speed well anyway so i finally removed this switch because it's like okay i've been dealing with it the entire time of having to have this on otherwise the computer shuts off and i finally tested it whenever it's open it's a shorter connection and whenever it's closed it's a uh, broken connection so just unplugging it will undo that i know eight years later i should have done it earlier but whenever things work sometimes you just don't mess with it well i hope you guys enjoy this video thank you very much for watching see ya